Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two of the circulatory system, uh, components of the blood part two. The blood is very complex, so this is the second part of what makes up the blood. We are going to focus on uh, platelets, uh, which is all about clotting, and then a condition called hemophilia, which again is all about clotting. So that's essentially what this lesson is about. Um, so we're going to continue from number three. This is number four, platelets. So platelets are very, very small. They're the smallest cellular components that aren't like nutrients or vitamins and things like that. And they are key point one. Um, they have no nucleus. They are essentially little pipe spiky things, as you can see in the diagram. And they live anywhere between five and nine days. They get filtered out by your kidneys, liver, and spleen again after that. They are produced in the bone marrow, just like our erythrocytes, which are red blood cells, and leukocytes, which are white blood cells. And there are about 250,000 platelets per milliliter of blood. So they are very, very, very small, and there is a lot of them. And the reason that there is a lot of them is because they may need to clot a large portion of uh, a bleed. So platelets are responsible for the initial stages of blood clotting, and their spiky nature will be very helpful for that. So platelets and clot formation. Blood must have the ability to fix wounds. They are the, uh, wounds are made when blood vessels are opened. Uh, so there are four components involved in the clotting process. Platelets, clotting factors, fibrin, and then other cells, we'll clump that in. Check out that video, uh, it is, uh, essentially an animation of how this all works, but we'll discuss it as well. So platelets um, are cell fragments. Uh, they are small and essentially when you have an open wound, they react to the air and become sticky. They form the initial plug. They're very spiky so they can connect to each other. They can connect to other things. You can imagine very spiky cells maybe grabbing on to a red blood cell as it flows by. Uh, and holding it there and then other things getting stuck on it as well. Uh, so platelets are spiky, they get caught on one another and it's kind of activated by blood. Clotting factors are next, key point two. Uh, there's 12 of them and they are proteins that um, jump in and reinforce the platelet plug. They all have different jobs, uh, maybe some of them are more like blue. This is very simple, obviously, compared to what the actual process is. Uh, maybe others are like anchors, but they essentially um, latch onto platelets and help with the formation of the clot. We then have fibrin, which is a mesh or a web-like protein that strengthens the clot. It goes over it and kind of holds that in place. Uh, and when we have fibrin, we call that coagulation in the blood. So uh, that is essentially a stronger plug at that point once the fibrin is there. And then there are other cells that get caught in it. White and red blood cells get trapped by the platelets, by the fibrin, uh, and they add to the structure. So that's why uh, your scabs are red, because they're mostly red blood cells by the end of it getting trapped. Again, check out a video. Um, not sure which one is the person using the cards and explaining, but uh, this one or the other one, but they both give um, another explanation, another point of view on how this all works. So here we have th the three different parts. This is obviously the red blood cell. This is the white blood cell, the large chunky thing. And here we have platelets. These in reality are a lot smaller um, than the picture shows, but you can see how spiky and hooked they are. Here's something that um, would be seen in the hospital quite regularly is a very, very swollen knee. And what happens here is between the joint, there's an injury and a little bit of fluid builds up. So this is what would happen with a normal injury to the knee. You might get some tingling, some heat, it might be swollen just a little bit, but we would be able to clear that out. Um, what would happen if you have hemophilia, which is key point three, um, is there would not be clotting available. So clotting can't happen when you have hemophilia. So you'd get more and more blood in this injury and you'd get a boggy, swollen 
um, muscle wasting area a stiffness chronic pain and limited movement if you don't drain it it would look like this essentially that's why this person is here um, so one blood disorder is hemophilia it is inherited so you get it uh, genetically and a specific blood clotting factor is lacking it is a deficiency that abnormally delays coagulation when bleeding occurs whether it be internal or external so that right here is an internal bleed and there's no clotting but if you get a big cut on your arm you may also not be able to stop the bleeding there either um, the result is that bleeding is difficult to stop when you have hemophilia there's lots of people affected mostly males uh, and treatment can be given you can give clotting factors and other help for that uh, but the biggest concern with hemophilia is that there will be internal bleeding let's say you're in a car accident uh, and there's a small bleed internally that normally wouldn't be too bad for people that may be a large problem as there's no way to stop it and it may cause a lot of blood to pool in the abdomen uh, and just cause a lot of problems internal be bleeding is a very large concern with hemophilia uh, as it doesn't take much to cause a body bruise and that can be uh, life-threatening for a person with hemophilia so I'd like you to do some research on it. I've said a lot about it already, but um, definitely go in and go into more detail. Answer the questions and let me know if you have um, any questions uh, or if you need any help. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. That was kind of short, so enjoy, uh, and I'll see you soon.